An independent think tank says a new study may hold the key to reducing our dependence on oil and also cutting our carbon emissions. According to Resources for the Future, that key involves converting 18-wheelers to run on liquefied natural gas. Clean Skies' Lee Patrick Sullivan recently went to California for a closer look at how these new big rigs measure up to their diesel counterparts. So Wilson, this is your new ride. Yes, this is my 2009 Sterling, fully automatic and it runs on uh, LNG. Wilson Asensio is a proud owner of a new LNG fueled truck. He's also from a family of truck drivers and it took some convincing for him to give up his powerful diesel rig. When they gave us the idea, we were very hesitant. We said, oh no, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be the same thing. It's not gonna have the same power. You know, we start to have some doubts. There was no doubt about LNG trucks in a new RFF study the report looked at different plans and new technologies to help reduce America's dependence on foreign oil. You get a lot of bang for your buck if you introduce liquefied natural gas into utilization by long-haul trucks, the big 18-wheelers. The study says converting the nation's 8 million big rigs to LNG would save nearly 2.5 million barrels of oil a day. That would cut the U.S. Mideast imports in half. In contrast, a tax credit for buying a hybrid car barely saves any oil at all. It's a plan that T. Boone Pickens has been advocating since the 2008 elections. Uh, when, the, when the president said at that time, he, that when he got the nomination, he said, uh, I expect in 10 years we will not import any oil from the Mideast. Well, two years has passed and he has not come up with a plan for it. And I have a plan for him. So do the operators of the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles. That's where Wilson Asensio's boss, Bob Curry, has been in the trucking business for more than 50 years. And we needed to know that the engine, which was a smaller engine, would be able to pull a container to and from the harbor, a heavy container. After the manufacturers brought in one of their LNG garbage trucks and drove it fully loaded up a steep incline, Curry was convinced. He turned to alternatively fueled vehicles after new restrictions were put in place by the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles. The clean trucks program only allows LNG and clean diesel trucks to enter their ports. The two technologies have similar emission levels. The LNG trucks aren't cheap. They're generally 70% more expensive than a traditional diesel rig. Curry was able to make up the price difference with a combination of grants from the California Air Resources Board and customers like Walmart and Sears who agree to pay more per container if drivers use an LNG truck. Trucking companies can also save money on fuel. LNG is only a fifth of the cost of diesel. Now I've been in a few of these big rigs and this looks pretty much like a like a diesel engine on the inside. Yes. Pretty much yes. It's similar to uh, to a diesel engine the only difference is the gearbox. No gearbox because the LNG rigs are automatic. An added bonus for drivers pulling 12-hour shifts behind the wheel. They're automatic. It's like anybody could drive it. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you can drive it if you get on that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Or your wife can drive it. I mean, <laughs> it's like having an SUV, okay. similar to that. You put your foot on the brake, release the brake, and it'll take off like a regular car. Critics say the biggest problem for an LNG nationwide conversion is infrastructure. Right now, all LNG terminals in the country are located in California. So the days of driving one of these trucks coast to coast are down the road. And filling up with LNG isn't as easy as filling up with diesel. It requires special training and special equipment because liquefied natural gas has to be kept at minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit. But for Curry and Asensio, who both grew up in Los Angeles, they remember the days when their air was so bad they had to stay indoors. And they feel like they are doing their part to clean up their hometown. I don't think any of us ever thought about dirty air before until the people brought it to our attention. And when they start bringing to your attention facts and figures and say, hey, uh, this is causing asthma, this is causing cancer, uh, then you sit back and say, hmm, We've got to do something about it. How does that make you feel that you're part of an industry that's helping to clean up an, uh, an area that you grew up looking at? Well, first of all, I think it's a great idea. Not only 
Long Beach, not only where I grew up, but we, we started thinking about, I mean, it would be nice if the whole country could convert to alternative fuel. I mean, I have a daughter. I want my daughter to have a better future. And something like this, alternative fuel, I think is the best, the best way to go right now. Now it's true, these LNG trucks cost a lot more money than their diesel counterparts, but they actually get more work. You see, ports are trying to cut down on their carbon footprint, and they actually request LNG trucks to enter their ports. In Wilmington, California, Lee Patrick Sullivan, Clean Skies News. Legislation that would provide grant funding for LNG trucks is now working its way through Congress.